hi everyone welcome to why volunteer in the arts um today we're gonna have a panel discussion with chris boot and jenny mckenzie um and they're gonna have just a chat about their experience volunteering in the art industry um and how their experiences have shaped their creative careers so far um chris is an arts project manager a freelance curator uh He's also part of Surface Gallery in Nottingham. And then we've got Jenny McKenzie, who is an abstract impressionist artist um, who does a lot of workshops and voluntary work in the arts, is also a resident at the Green Man Gallery. Um, but I will pass over to you two to give a bit more of an in-depth introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Yes. Hello, everyone. And it's nice to see a lot of people I know as well, which is always good. So I'll give you a little introduction about me. As Charlie said, I am primarily an arts project manager. Interestingly, I was thinking about this earlier, the, all the roles I've done, the one I've done the longest is a voluntary one, which says how much I enjoy it, I suppose. I've been part of Surface Gallery since 2013, where primarily I've been the volunteer coordinator. So supervising, recruiting, helping, working, collaborating with other people from all over the East Midlands, putting on art, art exhibitions, workshops, projects, all sorts, which is a great passion of mine. Besides that, I also work in the heritage sector, where I also have the, the privilege of working with a team of volunteers on research and oral histories as well. So I have a like a multifaceted bit of experience when it comes to volunteering in the arts opportunities and benefits. And alongside that, I also do work in arts and well-being as well. So I have quite a few sort of bits of experience when it comes to arts and volunteering and the benefits of it. And of course, I'm very passionate about it and enjoy a lot of it as well. And besides all that, I've also volunteered in quite a few other bits and pieces myself, which is a uh, Another thing I try and do very much with my free time. Okay, shall I go next, Chris? Go for it. Okay, um, I'm Jenny McKenzie and I've been a, an artist for 10 years. Um, I'm older than the rest of you, probably, and um, but quite new to the arts and creative field. So, um, I, I, I retired uh, early and went to live in France and set up a business and then I um, found myself with a bit of spare time and uh, I, I ran out art holidays in France and but I wasn't an artist but then I decided to join the ranks and start doing some painting and then I started as a volunteer um, in a, a craft and creative group of people, artists and other creatives. Um, and ended up trying to sort of coordinate and run the, the group uh, with workshops and interesting visits and exhibitions and the like. And um, in, it was quite difficult because it was in both French and English. So it was, it was good for my communication skills. Um, and then um, I've, I've been back in, in the UK since 2019. And then um, I started volunteering at a, a gallery because I wanted to be connected to the art community locally. I, moved, I didn't know Derbyshire. I knew it um, as visiting Derbyshire, but not um, um, as a resident. And so I, I joined the old Lockup Gallery in Cromford and the Green Man Gallery in, in Buxton, became a volunteer and thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, I also, um, was asked to take some uh, care of a, an art group that was seriously struggling for members and numbers. Um, it was in sort of decline because the group were getting older and um, people not able to get to the meetings and stuff. So I took that on and um, I carry on doing that and thoroughly enjoy what that brings. Um, and every day it's something new. <laughs> so. So, that, so that's, that's me. I am a resident artist at the Green Man Gallery and I've had exhibitions and stuff around the country, only small ones. Um, I'm sort of trying to be out there and developing myself as a sort of new creative, really. Thank you. 
Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> and thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I guess um, you sort of both kind of touched on already sort of how you got, uh, what you've been doing so far through your careers and volunteering. Um, it sort of be nice to know a bit about why you both volunteer in the arts and sort of how that came about for you. So for me, I'm from a fine arts sort of academic background. I did my BA in fine arts at Loughborough University and I graduated in 2013, so about eight years ago now. And I, I remember the sort of the thoughts that were in my head about then just before graduating and over the first sort of year where I was still sort of trying to figure out quite a lot about myself, what I wanted to do, what sort of routes I wanted to go in. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of pressure in society to, for us to always like have this grand career plan laid out in front of us and it's not always quite so straightforward, of course. So I decided that it'd be beneficial for me to do some voluntary work to figure out some bits about myself what I was interested in and to get myself out there a bit. I did some sort of general voluntary bits, sort of um, I, I worked with some children's arts groups. I went around Nottinghamshire doing arts and crafts workshops with kids because I was really quite keen on working with people in particular. I've always been quite sort of, um, even in my art practice, quite sort of socially engaged. And I love the idea of community and community development as well and I did have a little bits and bobs like helping out my local charity shop with the odd art event and um, I adopted a grandmother at my local care home and all sorts of little fun bits like that and then I found myself at Surface Gallery in Nottingham which I knew of already because I've had a, a few friends there and I was from Nottingham already so I had a little bit of an introduction which helped me sort of cross that boundary a bit. And I knew at that point that I wanted to work in the arts, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted my job to be, exactly where my skills lay, all that sort of stuff. And the thing I really enjoyed about Surface when I started was I wasn't sort of stuck in a little box saying, okay, here's like your one responsibility. You can go and try different bits out, find out about each other and sort of see what sticks for me and what works as well. So I, I latched onto what I felt was the most receptive for me. And then I, I took it for there, really. And from there, that really helped me sort of identify what I wanted to do going forwards career wise. So personally, for me at the start, it was kind of um, for my career purposes. And then it sort of developed after that into something else, being part of my local area, collaborating with my community and making friends as well. I often found that sort of, particularly the first few months after I graduated from my BA, I was somewhat a little bit isolated because I'd gone from being in university. I had this lovely studio I was sharing with someone I had all my friends there and um, before I knew it I was living with my parents in a village um, lovely as they may be it was quite nice to sort of think where do I find kindred spirits of a sort of creative souls so I was quite keen to meet artists and the quickest way I thought I could do that was say well I'll, I'll pop out and see who's doing voluntary work can I collaborate with them can I make friends with them and some of the friends I've had for the longest time in my adult life have been found that way. I'll pass it to Jenny now. Okay. Well, <laughs> well quite, quite a, a different sort of story, really. I started off as a physiotherapist in the NHS, and, but I'd always spent my career with people and um, going to France and setting up a business and doing what I was doing, I suddenly felt not only did I have time on my hands, but I also was missing sort of people and a purpose and what I was going to sort of make of myself in this new sort of world that I found myself of not being in employed work. Um, so I um, 
uh, that's really what led me to volunteer to run the group and give something of myself and and it gave us gave more to me than I think I gave to it to be honest um it was um and I d it wasn't as as a conscious thing as Chris has described as in he did it for his self for his career but and I'm not thinking enough of my career as such I don't feel I have a career in art I just love being an artist and doing creative things but um, it certainly was because I needed to do it I needed to be with people to share to generate ideas to come up with the creative process and thinking because it, it can be a very lonely place and um, I've, I've said many times that if you sit on your own and you are good at doing something in your art world you'll just carry on doing what you're good at because it's the easiest thing to do and you get a lot from it because you're good at it and it's really that uh, reaching out with other people that brings in the creative process um, you give something but also you get a huge amount back um, and I'll, later on, I'll, if I get a chance, I'll talk to you about a little project that we've been doing with the art club that I look after in Nottingham. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> That's really interesting, the sort of different approaches, um, kind of the sort of um, career side of getting into the arts, but also you both mentioned this kind of focus on working with people. I know that we were sort of going to talk about in, on this panel how volunteering has helped you develop your creative careers but um I don't know it actually seems like you're both sort of more concerned with the community aspect which is quite interesting yeah um I would definitely say um, well we've both got quite a clear sort of community focus to what we do and uh, I feel like at arts in particular it, it often has such a strong on the grassroots level, this community focus, it's often not so um, rigid in how it forms. It can be quite spontaneous. It can be a couple of friends starting something. It can be a group of people starting an art group or an art class. It doesn't have to follow this sort of linear path somewhere, which I'm always quite keen to stress when I talk about volunteering and volunteering in general and volunteering in the arts in particular, that it isn't always like this neat little thing in a box. A couple of people getting together to run an art event, art event in a local pub without funding is volunteering, in my mind, having a bit of fun doing that. The kind of person doing some stuff with their friends' kids to help them get used to art is volunteering in my book as well, alongside the more sort of structured formal stuff that you get as well. If I talk about how volunteering has developed my creative career, because that's sort of like the, what you were sort of alluding to there, I've always felt the main benefits for me have been sort of these soft skills. So not so much necessarily like saying I have this line on my CV, I have this sort of thing. The main one I've sort of got out of this, this sort of sense of, I don't really want to say confidence, because that makes me sound a bit arrogant, but sort of... Um, Self-belief, if you get what I mean, that I had a, a little bit of a, an insight into different bits and bobs. So I had a, an idea where that would take me if I wanted to explore it further and identify where my, my strengths and areas for improvement were as well. And particularly, I found that it reduced what I call my fear of failure, which of course lots of people have, but I felt that it really open the door for what that means that in a voluntary sort of capacity I had I was less afraid of getting things wrong I could learn I could experiment I could develop with other people so that pushed me a little bit further than perhaps a similar situation in a paid environment where obviously I have got other concerns about you know, I have responsibilities, I have a contract, I have all of this. I can sort of bend, bend the structure a little bit and try something new a little bit. And that's helped me also develop sort of practical experience and examples. So even and then when that situation where sort of this 
experience has been useful, say in a job interview, I'd be then able to explore particular examples with whoever I'm talking to, rather than simply saying I was part of X organization, I will go and say I was part of X organization and I did this and I did that and I worked with these people. Here's how I sort of developed from it. So having that sort of introspection that came from it as well. Also, besides the arts thing, I'm quite keen on the idea of lifelong learning, which is always quite a, an important concept these days in society and government talk about it a lot these days. And I found that volunteering was a quite a key idea of ongoing personal and professional development outside of formal education. So it helped me keep my career going and develop, even though I'd left university, I could still like learn in different formats. So it's like an ongoing thread for me through my career, which I'm really quite keen to keep going actually into the future. There you go, Jenny. Okay. Well, um, similar things, really. I would agree with Chris. And my biggest learning or help with my creative development has been um, the confidence of being part of something that, as, a, as a volunteer. I mean, I didn't go to art college, so I've learned practical things like curating, about opening nights, about your ambience of your gallery and or how it looks and how people see and appreciate art and all of those practical things that probably you learned barely uh, um, at, at college which I didn't do and so it's given me a whole fist of practical things as well you know and some of it learning on on the go in terms of you know your first art exhibition that you put on when you've never done one before and you're doing it as a volunteer to for a group of people um, and it's their first experience too of having their own work on the walls and I never forget that first time you put your work upon the wall and you you feel like you're you're hanging yourself almost naked on the wall and people are going to come and look at you and make an interpretation about yourself as an artist and what you do and what you represent so I'll never forget that and I and people that I work with and the volunteers and particularly the group in Nottingham you know they're so reluctant and scared of, of I had one lady who said Oh, I say, you know, if you're going to put this into a mount and put it on the wall in this exhibition, I, I need you to sign it. And she, got, she says, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I said, well, you know, <laughs> sign it on the back. <laughs> you know, I just didn't know what to do. But, you know, it's those sorts of things. And it's, it is quite scary and, and, and trying to overcome that yourself and trying to share that with other people so confidence is a huge thing as well as all the practical things that have added to my sort of career that now I can share with other people and bring to other occasions. If I add to that a little quickly because I completely get what you meant by that I think one of the the best things I got from volunteering in an art gallery was the sort of the practical reality of all the tiny fun little details and you were talking about bringing them out and signing it you know making sure you got everything ready for an event like even funny little practical skills like how do you hang a shelf straight all these little bits and bobs <laughs> that's absolutely critical and there isn't a seminar on that at our college no. the only way you really learn is by doing it mm. and um, the best way to learn by doing it is by with someone who's done it before and how else do you do that by collaborating and being where those people are so you pick up all those sort of fun little skills from the practical stuff to like budgeting to all these little fun little details getting things ready being organized which you can then translate into other places Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with you. It's it it, it is something that I'm I'm saying you could have learned to college because I've not been. I don't know that, but there is nothing like learning that um, in the in the real space in the real time and then sharing that. So it's great. 
there's loads to be added. I, I mean, I, I keep saying this, but I get as much from being involved in being a volunteer as as I, I get more out of it than I give, I, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And uh, it's even these funny little life skills. I always love giving the example of when I've like done DIY around my house and stuff. And how did I learn how to do all this? Well, how many paintings have I hung in volunteer shows and stuff like that? And you, you pick it all up. It's great fun. That's why I always feel. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to hear from both of you that, um... Because I guess when you think about how has it developed your creative careers, it's what you've learned from it. But it's also really nice the fact that, like Jenny, you mentioned with your art group and obviously Chris with hanging exhibitions and coordinating volunteers, you've been able to pass that, um, those skills that you've learned on. I think that's really lovely. <laughs> um, I mean, it's something and, like when, when you, uh, I mean, with, with the art group in, in Nottingham, um, we had our first open day. Um, it was only at the village hall where we, we meet and we'd put pictures on the walls and we'd got a show of easels and stuff and we'd had a session on framing and stuff. Anyway, and, and the first time one of the newer members, um, somebody chose to, to buy her piece of work. It wasn't a lot of money, but it, they chose to buy it. And that person could have, she could have danced all the way home, you know, just that somebody wanted to have her work on their wall and they just loved it. And it was just, it's, it's, I mean, it's such a nice thing when it happens to your, with your own work, but with other people as well, who I, I love that idea of, I suppose because I've worked in my career with people, I like the idea of helping people to become more confident, more successful, more creative, more passionate about what it is they do. When I, I don't really mind what it, what it is. Um, I just focus on art and painting and creatives, but it could be anything really. Yeah, it could be. Self-belief is quite like a, a key phrase there, isn't it? That sort of like um, gives you that affirmation that you're, you're on the right track with that yeah. sort of example of that, yeah. you know. This it painting gives, it gives, it gives you by someone yeah. and it's good and that really helps you because obviously a lot of creatives occasionally we are sometimes racked with self-doubt now and then and it makes me think in terms of like a the volunteering and an arts organization sense it's like this cyclical pattern to a lot of things which really i found helps people this idea of self-belief as well I remember when I I started volunteering at the arts and I was like I don't know anything who is anyone I've forgotten all your names all this sort of stuff which is pretty normal in I think any organization paid or not but then how do you sort of break through those barriers by someone helping you by introducing you to people by sort of being your buddy and taking you under the wing so to speak and before you know it, you've developed those skills. And before you know it, you're suddenly the experienced one. And someone, there's, a, there's a new person that's arrived and you're helping them. And this lifelong passing on of skills continues. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a, a static thing. It keeps going. And this idea of art as a community keeps developing and moving mm -hmm. is really important for us. Yeah, that's really, really interesting to hear because obviously you're both sort of working in these kind of group collaborative environments where you are passing around skills. Um, like you've obviously both had experience as a volunteer and then learning these skills, passing those on and um, sort of with those kind of community based projects and collaborative working with other volunteers um, or arts practitioners as a volunteer what would you say is sort of one of the best opportunities you've had to kind of develop um, as an arts practitioner, as a volunteer? As a sort of an overall sort of thing about that, I would say it's simply by being given the opportunity to try has been by far the biggest impact on that sort of 
um, being someone's opened that door for me and said, have a go, Chris, see what happens. And that idea of what might constitute success, failure or progress has changed somewhat in my mind where I've been part of an environment where I won't get shouted at if it goes wrong. I'm not going to get fired. Of course, you still got those high standards that you'd want to adhere to. So what do you do? You talk to other people and if you start, if you're stuck, you ask them for, for help and for guidance. They're not going to go, haha, you don't know what you're doing. They're going to go, okay, this is how we've done it before. Do you want to give it a go this way and see what you think? And that has really sort of changed my mindset about how I do something and the importance of giving something back as well, because it's not just been about say oh it must be right exactly the first time sometimes I felt later on when I've been like a volunteer coordinator it's been good for someone else to have a go okay I might have been doing it longer than them perhaps at that point perhaps therefore I might have more chance of doing it right the first time but at that point what's the actual benefit of this wouldn't it be good to give them a go and learn as well this idea of giving back has really sort of developed in my head since then so this sort of learning opportunity it's not necessarily been like a specific exhibition or a specific project but more like an accumulative change where I've learned what is success or failure to me and for me it is about what's the overall benefit for everyone not just for me but also for like my area my community and community can be the other volunteers at surface it can be my friends, it can be the local area around me, it can be the artists I'm working with. What's the best sort of long term impact for all of these people is the thing that sort of changed my head the most, particularly also when I started doing some stuff in heritage, which is very got a clear idea what community can be as well. They're very much associated with uh, like certain groups, demographics or ex-workers of a particular place or a geographic identity, which I've sort of taken on board. Like, what does it mean to give something back? So these days, whenever I think of a project I want to do, I think, who am I going to work with? Who's going to benefit from this? What's the reasons for doing this? Who's going to do it in the future when I've too busy so I can pass it on and it doesn't just die a death with me so it's really changed my mind about how I do things and it's become almost like a political thing for me this idea of collaboration community being part of a cooperative being part of a group so that's really my sort of main mindset these days if I was to think about sort of a specific important learning opportunity I can think of times when uh, I won't name names for their own sort of um, <laughs> their own politeness but um, someone sort of sort of sat me down and said would you like to do this with me and that's really sort of given me that self-belief again which I think has really been great for me and I found that volunteering has been this constant thread for me over the last sort of decade or so when I've you know had jobs I've left jobs and sometimes in gaps that volunteering has kept me going and there's been times when say at work I thought oh what should I do here then I've looked back at what I've done and thought okay here's the example from here and pulled it all together from there so the personal benefit for me has been immeasurable for sure well, um, mine's on a much smaller scale than Chris. I, 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 it wasn't really until Charlie asked me if I would take part in this that I even thought about what I was doing as being volunteering. Okay, yes, I volunteered and did some duties at a gallery or two galleries, but the rest of it didn't feel like volunteering. It was, it's more, it was more about, um, and I've said this earlier, it was a need in me to be able to share and take part in things and be part of something. Um, and so uh, I think this whole idea, like Chris, of giving back, what, 
but I don't feel like I'm giving back. I'm feeling, I think it's in equal shares or perhaps the other way around and that I get more from it. Um, in terms of sort of what sort of uh, was being the main sort of opportunity, really, um, there's been loads. I mean, selling, helping, being in the gallery when uh, somebody came, the first gallery I was a volunteer at and somebody came in and wanted to buy a painting that was on show in the exhibition. And, you know, it was a tiny painting by a, quite a reputable artist. And it was quite a lot of money. Well, in my terms, you know, it was, it was oh, in the thousands. And, uh, well, no, 2000, over, just over 2000 pounds. And, and, you know, it was like, a, I just, it was like something that was an, an opportunity to be part of that. And I really, with a great enthusiasm, rang the artist up and told her that I'd sold it for her and she was delighted too. So, you know, that was an opportunity. Um, and I know exactly where she was coming. I was excited, let alone if it had been, a, you know, your own work. And in the and selling my own work has sort of re regenerated that idea of people wanting to be, have their your work as part of their life. I'd, I, and it's sort of sharing that and sharing all of the benefits of that that I enjoy doing and has given me great opportunities. Um, I was a volunteer at the Green Man Gallery before I became a resident artist. I suppose that was an opportunity for them to get to know me and to uh, know that I would be quite a useful sort of member of the of the Green Man Gallery community. Um, so <laughs> let's hope anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Jenny. <laughs> um, I was just going to interrupt just conscious of time because um, I sort of wanted to come on to another point. Going back to what you were saying about running um, the art group, Jenny, um, it'd be interesting to hear from both of you about how um, volunteering's changed given the current situation the past year and um, and why you both continue to volunteer in the arts. I know that you've said about um, the using sort of technology to continue your art group. Um, I think you said about a WhatsApp group or something. Yeah. Um, it'd be really nice to hear a little bit about why you keep, keep doing this despite the circumstances. Well, um... Again, this is as much for my need as anybody else's in that this little art group in Nottingham um, was struggling for members and we did work for a year to try and get more members and we, we were being quite successful and we had some nice open days and, and an exhibition and, um, and then we got, you know, it was the Covid thing and lockdown and we couldn't meet and all of that and bearing in mind, you know, when I, the, the, the average age of the group when I started with them not I've taken myself out of the average here it was 75 was the average age and um you know my mum's the, is the president of the art group and she's 86 and um and so it was sort of in decline we got some new members and stuff and then we were in uh, covid lockdown and um and so I, we were looking at how we could try and meet virtually and I had to look for the simplest technology that people could work and WhatsApp turned out to be great. I didn't have to do much to help people to be able to I help people get the right phone to start with so a few people had to change the phones but basically we do a weekly challenge. Um, each week one of the members um, in alphabetical order chooses their favorite from the challenge and that person who is chosen as favorite sets the next challenge and we're on week 44 45 now we just 44 was finished yesterday and 44's challenge week 44's challenge was uh, life on mars and the work was just exceptional it was just I mean, my mum's piece, I've entered it for a, for a, a couple of opens because it, she, she'd she gone in the shed and got some Humbrol spray paints out and she'd sprayed painted this bright red Mars planet with Percy the Perseverance rover landing on it with a parachute that she'd taken for some, from some Japanese fabric that she'd found and 
pasted it onto the board. I mean, it was, it was, I thought to myself, I cannot, just cannot believe it. And every piece that was submitted that week was just exceptional. So out of people's comfort zone, so out of their flowers and still life. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because they were brilliant at that as well. But this whole creative process, because on their own, they would still be doing the daffodil and they would still be doing uh, and yet it's brought such richness to myself as well I mean it's not I you know I'm often severely challenged by the, the challenges that are put forward um, some of them very because I you know I can't paint horses I can't do self portraits I you know and but you just have to have a go and do your best and it's fantastic I, I, if anybody w as an artist wants to have something back and give something your local art group they're all looking for somebody who will take on a sort of role of being some sort of coordinator they do te see me as some sort of art teacher you know a couple of the people the members call me the teacher but I don't I can't teach I can only show people and encourage people and if I know how to do something I will share how to do it but I very rarely know how to draw a horse or <laughs> but I can set up a nice still life I can do workshops and stuff so you know it, um, and all of us bring different things to it and when we get back to a normal program of workshops and and uh, um, uh, meet, meeting of actually face to face um, we will we will go from strength to strength um, our membership now is ranges from in, we have a one participant who's in Australia. We have two participants in France. We have one person who lives in Woodborough, uh, in Loughborough, and one person who lives in Cambridge. And the rest are all local to the village where the meetings happen. So it's got become very diverse and very eclectic. So that's my little project. I'll make mine short and sweet. Uh, the I my I like um, basically because I feel that people need support from each other now more than ever, and it won't just magically fix itself in the summer. And our idea of community and who we work with and who we support has probably profoundly changed for forever, or certainly for the foreseeable future. I would have probably, if you'd asked me a year ago with Surface as an example, asked what's our community, I'd have drawn you a map with a mile in every direction. I would now probably talk about uh, people at particular career points, particular demographics, things like that, no matter where they are in the country. And the opportunity, if there are opportunities by this present situation to reach people in new ways, I think of other stuff I've done, like this week, where I talked to someone in Plymouth, or talked to someone in Newcastle, or talked to someone in Ipswich. Never would have even occurred to me a year ago. I'd never given you what Zoom was a year ago, all this sort of stuff. So these op there are opportunities to the moment. And I think we need to keep doing it so that we can support each other, because it, it can be tricky to get started in the arts, and it doesn't magically fix itself as it goes along. You learn as you go along, you support each other as you go along, and you benefit as you go along as well. Very quickly, I remember the main reason I started doing online events this last sort of last year was because in sort of March, like a lot of people, I was stuck at home and I was wondering what to do with my free time. I avoided being furloughed, but I was on very much reduced hours, and I thought, what can I do to sort of provide a bit of lightheartedness, a bit of um, a bit of fun to the situation, of course. 